What's poppin' you double monkey fucking doubling and ding dong motherfuckers? I haven't taken a break. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I've been uploading constantly. I definitely upload, uploaded that God of War video that I was saying I was gonna do. Anyway, not like you care. Um, today I'm actually gonna do a video that I want to make because uh, I want to enjoy my life. Um, so this one's probably gonna have somewhat better editing involved. Uh, yeah. Uh, hope you enjoy. Now, before you say anything, I'm not talking about the game. I'm talking about the character, the comics, the movies, the game itself, and not just the one Spider-Man. I'm talking about Miles as well. Um, we're going to fucking enjoy ourselves this time. So, um, sit back, relax, pull out your favorite dildo, and uh, enjoy the show. Alright, so, first thing that we need to talk about, the comics. Comics, comics, amazing shit, amazing, amazing things. Um, the thing is, Spider-Man's not doing so well in those comics, at least nowadays. You see, comic book writers don't know what Spider-Man is. They see what he looks like, but they don't know what he is. They see a kid who's turning into a man who has superpowers and his life is so cool. But the thing is, his powers are his curse, it's his responsibilities. You see, normal teenagers, yeah, we go through shit. We go through a lot of shit. But Peter Parker, it, it's a whole nother level. People think his powers make his life so much better. Like, everyone wants superpowers. Hell, I'm sure even he did before he, he got them. And as soon as he got them, his life just turned to shit. Uncle Ben taught him a lesson, a lesson that he might not have wanted to learn, but it's still important that he did. It's that great with great power comes great responsibility. What that means is if you have powers that others don't, if you have the power to stop something, it is your responsibility to do so. If you have the power to save a life that day, that is your responsibility to do. And the greater your power, the greater your responsibility, not your freedom. Responsibility is the opposite of freedom. It's a mandatory thing. And Peter has to go through that every day. His love life is ruined because of his powers. His whole life, his career, everything about him is being destroyed because of that incident where a spider just happened to bite him. And it could have happened to anybody. That's what makes Spider-Man such a great character. His mask hides who he is. And it's a whole different person. Spider-Man could be any one of us. And that's what makes him such a relatable character. He's a teenager going through teenage problems while having to deal with superhero problems as well. Now, let me put that better. So, the comic book writers now think kid with powers turning into an adult and has some pretty cool powers but the truth is it's a kid having to deal with the responsibility of having these powers while trying to figure out who he is and become a man and that is something that revolutionized comics and superheroes in general Alright, I don't care what none of y'all say. That is a great fucking scene, and that is a great movie. Alright, Spider-Man 3, greatest film ever. Uh, anyways, back to the comics. Um, 
yeah, his responsibility and uh, all that. It gets in the way of his life. And um, one thing about him is he has a no kill rule. Because if he, you know, commits a murder, he's no better than the people he's trying to stop. And that's often broken. Well, not often, but there are occasions when it's done. And when it is done, it's not, it's not pretty. Um, he's been forced to kill a few times, or he's been driven to such anger and aggression where it, it's the only thing that's on his mind. Because he's still a person. We, we get angry, we get such rage and bloodlust. He's killed and he's regretful. He blames himself for every death that happens in his life because he believes he could have stopped it. And everything is just piling on top of him. Like, there's this one instance where, in Craven's last time, a bunch of stuff happens. Craven ends up killing himself after believing to have killed Spider Man. And, um. Craven's wife and daughter decide to um, kill Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider, because they believe that Spider-Man are close enough to him to resurrect Craven. Spidey digs himself out of a grave and then um, finds Ben dead. And he's, well, for good reason, really pissed. And the way he ends up killing Craven's wife um, is he puts his hand on her face uses equilibrium power and rips it right off i forget how his daughter dies though she's not important though um but you know that's just one of a few examples of when he's killed um there was this other one where people were like he killed a woman for a joke um because there's uh anti-hero lady or something like that i like uh um a uh, something and then she's talking crap to Spidey and he's like hey shut up lady so he shoots his white shit all over her face and then, um, his web fluid takes like one to two hours to dissolve and it was covering her nose and mouth so that lady suffocated to death for her loud mouth anywho <laughs> anyways bitches I'm changing it up again this is not going to be one video, haha, <laughs> you fucking thought. This is going to be split up into multiple videos now. Probably a series where I talk about the games, the movies, all of it. And compare them to everything else, all the other media of Spider-Man. Probably starting off with the original Sam Raimi trilogy, where I compare that to the more modern Spider-Man with um, Tom Holland. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's get back to that shit. I'm definitely not recording this three days later, fuck you. Um, speaking of which, kind of want to create a name for my, uh, four, four fans. Uh, I want it to be fitting to me and the people that watch these videos. And I already call you it, by the way. Um, your guys' new name is My Bitches. Alright, now back to that Spider-Man ship. Um, I don't know where the fuck we were before, but there's a thing I want to talk about. Um, and that's how comic book writers... Oh, I already talked about it. Comic book writers don't know what the fuck they're doing with Spider-Man. Um, and uh, I already talked about how they just don't know what makes him who he is. Um, but there's another part. They don't want him to fucking grow up. You see, it's it's it, it sounds weird. It sounds weird. But, like, if you think about it, every Spider-Man comic starts with him being a 15-year-old kid again. Like, we can never get him being an adult. There's even a fucking story, very popular one, because of what happens in it, where um, Peter makes a fucking deal with the devil to bring his 93-year-old fucking aunt. I don't know how fucking old she is. She's probably, like, centuries old. I don't fucking know. Um, but, like, so it's in the Civil War story where Peter exposes himself as Spider-Man, and then Aunt Meg gets a fucking sniper around to the stomach. Uh, she's in the hospital. She's dying. Nature's taking its course. Mother Nature's about to fucking beat the shit out of her. Um, kind of like God did with a stick. Um, and 
anyway, Peter's like, oh no, my aunt, she, she's a, she's my family, my la, 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 the, the, the last of it, I can't have her die, so, he, he walks over to Satan's fucking front door, goes, hey, bitch, let me in, and then, you know, Satan being a homie, lets him in, and then he's like, uh, give me back my aunt, he's like, alright, give me your fucking wife, he's like, why? I don't know. She's, she's like ginger and shit. She's got no soul. Uh, something like that. You, you know, I not, I, I don't want to skip over any details, but shit like that. And then Peter's like, all right, take the bitch. I got side hose left and right. Um, so he sacrifices his entire marriage to revert back to a child where he can live with his aunt eating her pancakes again. And that's what I mean about them not letting him grow up. Like, you, th do you think, like, a 25-year-old married man would change his entire life to bring someone back? Okay, they would, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to keep that. Because no matter how great something is, it must come to an end. That's what makes it so great. That's what makes life so livable, is the fact that it's going to end at some point. That's why you want to live your life to the fullest. But they don't want Peter to do that. They want him to stay this the same child so they can write the same story over and over and over again. Following the same formula, creating some fucking shitty Spider-Man stories... And I'm not saying they're all bad. We've had, like, a bunch of good ones. Uh, I think more recently they're starting to, like, get get a better grasp on it. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not I'm not caught in the loop of all that. Um, but, yeah, it's just I want to see him be an adult. Like, in the video game, he's 22, 23. So he's been spider Maning for, like, eight years at that point. And don't, I don't want to spoil it for all of you, but, uh, the game's fucking two years old, so if you haven't already, you should fucking play it. Um, Aunt May dies in the end. And it's such a great conclusion to the story. It, it's the last bit of Peter Parker left in his life, and he throws all of it away f because of Spider-Man. Spider-Man isn't peter parker it's they're not the same person they just inhabit the same body they're two different individuals with two different responsibilities peter is responsible for his friends and family his life every bit of that spider-man is responsible for all of new york and at the end of the game i thought they were gonna make you choose whether you want to save aunt may or save the city but they don't and that makes a lot of sense like I doubt they did it for this reason, specifically, but it shows. The the lack of choice shows how Peter doesn't have a choice between what he does and what he doesn't do. He may want to save Aunt May's life, but that city needs that cure because everyone will die without it. And that's what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. Not his superpowers, not his quips, not his crappy jokes. His responsibility and his need to let go in order to save a life. He doesn't care if he dies as long as he died saving somebody. And that's what makes him truly spectacular. His selflessness is his greatest weapon. Anyways, bitches, I'm getting tired. This video is getting longer than I'm used to. Um, and if it gets longer, I'm probably never going to upload it. <coughs> God of War. Um, so, yeah, it's been a few months. Um, I've been working on videos. Nothing's really come out of them. I've made some funny edits here and there um, for those videos. But, um... I don't know, I've just been, you know, stuck with school, social life, all of that, um, you know, same classic bullshit that we all go through, um, anyways, uh, my winter break's coming up, I have no idea if I will be making videos or not, 
half of you probably don't give a crap. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I want you to know if you do end up, if anyone watches this, thank you. Because videos are something I've always wanted to make since I was, like, six. And now I have the skill and the knowledge to do so. If anybody finds this video enjoyable, please share it with a friend. Like, comment, something. Um, hopefully positive. Uh, I'll accept negative feedback as well. <laughs> Just any feedback will be nice. Um... But, yeah, it's been real. Later, bitches.